Viva Barefoot claims that this is their most barefoot feeling trainer ever, so I bought a pair to see if this is true. This is going to be my honest review of the new Viva Barefoot Motors Flex, a new barefoot shoe with a specific focus on balance and flexibility. The thing is, choosing the right pair of any fitness shoe can be a bit of a headache. There's a lot of choice out there, especially with the Viva range. So for three weeks, I worked out in them doing a range of exercises to really see if they're the real deal. And by the end of this video, you'll know what the Motors Flex are like to use, what some of their pros and cons are, and if they're really worth spending your hard-earned money on. So stay where you are. I actually think these are a good looking shoe. Vivo Barefoot have really done well here. I like the design way more than the Motor Strengths, which was their previous major release in this gym shoe, sports performance shoe area. I mainly like the fact that they don't have any straps or rigid material around the top of the shoe. I much prefer the simplicity of just a sock type upper. And these elasticated laces are a nice touch too. These elastic type laces have been a pain for some in the past. On the Primus Trails here, you'll see that this part used to flap about or get twisted up, but they've included a little hook here to keep the lace in place. Quite a nice touch. But I guess we're gonna find out if they work well. There are still a few things I can see that could be a problem right now, but let me try them out first. I've tried a few Vivo Barefoot shoes over the past, I'd say, year. The Primus Knits, the Primus Trail FGs, the Motor Strengths, so it'll be good to see how these compare experience-wise. It's worth mentioning as well, the marketing for the Motors Flex has been pretty intense. They've got athletes doing all sorts of twists, handstands, back bends, all that sort of stuff. And I won't lie, I kind of wish I could do that stuff myself. So I got a pair for myself and I'm gonna share with you what my experience has been like. This is as good a point as any to tell you that this review isn't sponsored in any way by Vivo Barefoot or any company for that matter. These shoes were bought with my own money and not sent to me for free either. So with that being said, let's get into it. This sole is different. My initial thought when I first put them on was that this sole is super thin. It doesn't actually feel like a typical rubber kind of sole that you would have on a barefoot shoe at all. It feels thinner. You'll also notice how the sole is split up into sections. So when you wear them, it really gives you that feeling of flexibility in your feet movements. They've basically created a sole that has creases in the areas of the feet that move the most. So moving in them should feel very smooth. You can see the areas here and here where the foot articulates the most and it's actually easier to bend the sole in these areas. Pretty cool. I did have some doubts about the sole. It feels kind of thin and delicate. I also had concerns as to whether the separated sections of the sole would hold up well to daily wear and tear or whether they would become a weak point in the shoe's construction over time. Like if I start running in them, would they be able to handle the punishment of more rigorous movements? I know of course they're not labeled as a running shoe, but I do intend to do some running in my workouts. For the few weeks I've been using them, the sole has performed okay, but it is something I will be keeping an eye on for the long term, mainly because of what's happened in the past with me and Vivo Barefoot Shoes. I will of course be posting an update after using them for a bit longer, but for the record, there hasn't been anything alarming after three weeks of use. It looks promising. I think the problem was that they used glue to attach the sole to the upper instead of stitches, which in my opinion would be stronger. And it seems that with frequent use, this glue can sometimes fail. Not every time, but I have noticed it myself in other shoes. So let's talk about working out in the Motors Flexes. I tested them out in a few types of exercises. I of course wore them for squats and deadlifts and there were no surprises there. I have no complaints about their performance for those two moves in particular. Even though they did okay, squats and deadlifts aren't really going to push these shoes to their limits. I had to focus more on moves that really target overall balance and flexibility, like Cossack squats, lunges, pistol squats, or anything a bit more challenging. I would say that the flexibility of the sole makes a massive difference. I don't always take my shoes off or take my socks off when I train, but these shoes felt very close to the kind of extra dexterity and stability that lifting weights or doing anything really in just pure bare feet or socks feel. Talking about running in them, something that actually surprised me was how much better they feel for running. I actually think they make a really good running shoe. And again, it all comes down to the flexibility and articulation in the sole. I ran on a treadmill, but it's only subtle, but my feet felt comfortable for longer than usual. No restriction in my toes or problems with stability. There obviously isn't any cushioning in these shoes, so they're not going to be comparable to a shoe that's defined as a running shoe. But the fact that the sole flexes at the toes and in the arch at those specific points makes running in them, for me, a more pleasurable experience. The way the shoe fits to my feet also helps my running gait too. The arch area of the sole hugs my arch more closely. It doesn't work as an arch support of any kind, but just feeling the sole against my arch kept me more mindful of my gait or foot position with every stride or step I take when I'm running or walking. I do have slight pronation or flat feet that I am mindful of when I run. So the fit of the sole just touching my arch reminds
reminds me to keep the alignment of my feet in a good position. I personally prefer it that way instead of relying on arch supports when I run. But even though I had an overall positive experience working out in the Motors Flex, there are a couple of negative things that I think are worth mentioning that you should know about. But first, let's get into who I think the Motors Flexes are for. In my opinion, I don't think that the Motors Flex are only for people who do calisthenic type workouts. I think as a general gym shoe, they work pretty well. Just walking around in them for long periods of time, they've been really comfortable. If your workouts involve a bit more single leg moves and some flexibility and balance training with weights, then I can definitely see you getting some real benefits with a barefoot shoe like this. But also, if you don't do any of that and you just want a comfortable barefoot shoe, these can still benefit you. They do other things well. When I'm training, I prefer to wear a shoe with a lot of space in the toe box, just enough so that I can splay my toes out more. And that's the reason why I started training in barefoot shoes in the first place. But not every barefoot shoe is created equally. Some of them have different widths around the shoe, some have smaller toe boxes, and some are just all around narrow. This is the first pair I've tried that hug my arches while still giving me good toe box space to move my toes when I'm training. Some of them, no matter how well you lace them, they just feel like a wide shoe with nothing else considered. I personally think that the overall construction and added flexibility in the materials with these feel a level above a regular barefoot shoe. Like I mentioned, the sole is a lot more flexible and the upper is designed to fit more like a sock. There's no rigidity or straps that would add any unrequired bulk to the shoe, which is another thing that I really liked. So it feels really stripped down, but there are negatives or sticking points with this shoe that I'm gonna get into. Okay, just before I get into the negatives, do consider joining my discount club. Sign up for free and I'll email you discount codes for fitness products just like this. Just scan the link in the corner or click the link in the description. Negative point number one, are the motors flex worth their price tag. Now this is the first negative point about these shoes that I have to mention. I think that this price could scare many people away. The argument that Vivo Barefoot shoes are a little overpriced is a common one, but I think it's a valid point. These Motors Flex at the time of making this video come in at £165 or $190 if you're in America, which is quite steep. When you look at how stripped down the shoe is as well, you can understand why a lot of people question the prices of these shoes so much. I think the price of these will make a lot of people walk away from them, which is a shame. But if the price doesn't worry you and you do go for them there's another hurdle you have to get over and that's the sizing I had a real issue with this one there seems to be a sizing issue with Viva barefoot shoes in general that I am seeing come up quite frequently it actually happened more than once with me and others have mentioned it happening to them too I ordered these in a size 12 UK which is my regular size and it's the size that the Viva barefoot personal fit scan or online sizing app recommended me to buy there's definitely a lack of consistency there so because of my previous experiences I decided to not just buy a size 12, I bought a size 13 too, but to be even more on the safe side, I bought an 11 and a half as well. To my surprise, I found that the 11 and a half actually fit me the best. I've had pairs where the 13 fit me better as well. Very strange. So right now I'm kind of confused. I can't say with confidence what my size in Viva Barefoot shoes is. Am I really gonna have to get three pairs to try on every time I want to buy a pair from now on? Sometimes their sizes make sense and sometimes they just don't. So bear that in mind if you're about to order a pair. Also, let me know in the comments if you've had this problem because I wanna know how common it is. Now, now sticking point number three is the insole situation. This will be a minor thing, but it's worth sharing with you because it might help you out. So let me explain. So when the shoes arrived, they came with the typical basic insole that comes with pretty much all Vivo Barefoot shoes. The bright yellow insole made from a recycled material that doesn't really do much support wise. It's just a thin basic sheet of recycled material. Anyway, when I tried them on for the first time, the socks I was wearing them with was making my feet slide around a little bit inside the shoe. Obviously not a good thing if I'm gonna be running or carrying heavy weights with them or doing any kind of workout. The sliding just didn't feel secure. So the socks that I currently wear are sweat wicking socks which are made of polyester and I thought that that could be the cause. So I tried them out with cotton socks and it was a little bit better but the problem was still there. Now I know some people wear barefoot shoes without socks and they might not have this problem but I prefer to wear them with socks so I had to find a solution. I decided that I should try and replace the insole for a better one and I recommend most people to do that. On the Vivo website they recommend a cork material insole that costs an extra nine pounds. I did order one to see if it would sort the problem but the problem is the delivery takes about four days and I didn't really want to wait another four days to be able to properly test these shoes out. So the solution I came up with was this. I just took the basic insole out of both shoes 
and I just flip them upside down and you'll notice that the underside has these small indentations and grooves that are of course meant to grip the bottom of the shoe. This texture is a lot more grippy so I thought why not try it? Let's see if it fixes the sliding situation and gives me more grip and you know what? It actually worked. I know it's not recommended and I have no idea how long they'll maintain this grip but it's been three weeks and they've felt great. No movement or sliding and they actually feel how an insole should feel. The cork insoles did arrive and I haven't even taken them out of the packet yet. I'm actually happier using this little hack. They just feel a lot more grippy. So that's a little tip that might help a few people out. Let me know in the comments if you've had that problem yourself. If you are gonna get a pair, consider a different insole or using my little upside down trick because like I said, my socks were just sliding around in them a bit too much and it just wasn't giving me a good feeling with them to begin with. So for my overall verdict with the Motus Flex, I'd say this. I think Vivo Barefoot have missed the trick here. They've gone heavy marketing this shoe more towards calisthenics people and I get it but I think the comfort of this shoe and its performance makes it more than that they're comfortable to wear and walk around in even if you're not working out if I worked in a job where I was say on my feet all day I would still wear a shoe like this the sole design for me is the main difference maker in this shoe and I definitely think it's a type of sole that more manufacturers should use in their shoes not just for gym or fitness shoes either this sole would lend itself very well to a hiking boot or even just an everyday shoe for walking if it had a bit more cushioning a large part of the score I'm going to give this shoe is tainted by the fact that I've previously seen the build quality of Vivo Barefoot shoes not be where they should be. Not only that, as I mentioned, I think the price would be a sticking point for a lot of people. I think this is a shoe that could convince a lot of people to try out Barefoot shoes, but pricing them so much higher than say a pair of Nike Metcons, which are probably the most popular shoe in the fitness space right now, I think Vivo Barefoot really missed the trick. I'm gonna give these shoes a 4.25 out of five. That's a good rating, but I've put an asterisk on that. Why? mainly because I haven't had them long enough to see if the wear and tear is better than the others. But if they hold up durability wise in my update video, which will come soon, that score could rise, but it could also fall. I talked a little in this video about my experience with the previous big release from Vivo Barefoot, the Motor Strength, and you can see my review of that shoe here. With that being said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, I'll see you on the next one.